Welcome for turning into our channel at Joe's Fat Kennedy TV as we take on today's Seed of Destiny written by Dr. Pastor Paul Inench. Let's read and pray along. First time it occurred to me that as association is a foundation for acceleration. Who you walk with will determine how far you can run. He that walketh with the wise shall be wise. He that moveth with runners shall run. If you are accompanying with settled people, you will be settled. If you keep the company of settled people, you will be settled. If you keep the company of seated people, you will be sitting. If you keep the company of crawlers, you will be crawling. And you will think you are succeeding because every other person around you is crawling. You keep the company of workers, you will be walking. But just keep the company of runners, you will run. And keep the company of flyers. Hey! Seed of Destiny written by the senior pastor of Junamis International Gospel Center, Dr. Paul Anenche. Saturday, the 26th of October, 2024. Our topic, the world of battle. Today's scripture, and from the days of John the Baptist until now the kingdom of heaven suffereth violence, and the violent take it by force. Matthew chapter 11 verse 12. Hallelujah. Our thought for the day, one reason why we need a brutal, aggressive, fighting spirit is that we live in a world of battles. Our anchor scripture makes an interesting statement about the inevitability of battles or violence such that not even the kingdom of heaven is excluded. We live in a world of battles, so it takes violence to conquer in life and destiny. It takes the engagement of force to possess your inheritance in God. You need a fighting spirit to become all that God has ordained you to be in life. Now, one reason why we need a brutal, aggressive, fighting spirit is that, we live in a world of battles. Our world is characterized by wars and battles. This makes possessing a fighting spirit an unavoidable necessity for survival. It is very disastrous to sit on the fence in a battle-filled world like ours. Ephesians chapter 6 verse 12 says, For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. You may think you are living in a normal or regular world, but we are living in a world that is literally a battlefield. 2 Corinthians 10 verse 4 to 5 says, For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds winking face, casting down imaginations, and every high thing that exalteth itself against the knowledge of God, and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. The truth is, whether you are interested or not, there is a wrestling going on. This is the fact, whether you offend someone or not, you must wrestle. Some time ago, a little boy was given a candy sweet by his friend in school. He put the candy in his pocket, forgetting to lick it. When he got home, the mother checked the pocket of the boy, and it was shocking what she brought out. It was a human finger she brought out of his pocket instead of the candy. Then the mother asked him, what is this? How did you get this? And the boy said, my friend gave me a candy sweet in school. Can you imagine that? What was meant to be a physical food was actually a witchcraft initiation. Beloved, always remember that we live in a world of battles so you can equip yourself to fight the battles of life. Remember this, one reason why we need a brutal, aggressive, fighting spirit is that, we live in a world of battles. Take this assignment with you. Number 1. Always equip yourself with the mentality that the world is a battleground. Number 2. Ask God to baptize you with a fighting spirit. Yes sir, our prayer today, Lord, help me to be battle ready as I live in this world. I ask for a fresh baptism of a fighting spirit, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. For further understanding, get this message, existence at the top, the power of fighting spirit. Quote, victory belongs only to fighters. You must therefore make up your mind to be a fighter, especially in spiritual battles against the forces of darkness that want to collapse your destiny by all means. Culled from the book, 30 Secrets to the Top, 
by Dr. Paul Anenche. Today's daily reading, from the book of Luke chapter 16 to 18. We start with book of Luke chapter 16, he also said to his disciples, There was a certain rich man who had a steward, and an accusation was brought to him that this man was wasting his goods. So he called him and said to him, What is this I hear about you? Give an account of your stewardship, for you can no longer be steward. Then the steward said within himself, What shall I do? For my master is taking the stewardship away from me. I cannot dig. I am ashamed to beg. I have resolved what to do, that when I am put out of the stewardship, they may receive me into their houses. So he called every one of his master's debtors to and said to the first, How much do you owe my master? And he said, A hundred measures of oil. So he said to him, Take your bill, and sit down quickly and write fifty. Then he said to another, And how much do you owe? So he said, A hundred measures of wheat. And he said to him, Take your bill, and write eighty. So the master commended the unjust steward because he had dealt shrewdly. For the sons of this world are more shrewd in their generation than the sons of light. And I say to you, make friends for yourselves by unrighteous mammon, that when you fail, they may receive you into an everlasting home. He who faithful in least is faithful also in much, and he who is unjust in least is unjust also in much. Therefore if you have not been faithful in the unrighteous mammon, who will commit to your trust the true and if you have not been faithful in what is another man's, who will give you what is your own. No servant can serve two masters, for either he will hate the one and love the other, or else he will be loyal to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and mammon. Now the Pharisees, who were lovers of money, also heard all these things, and they derided him. And he said to them, You are those who justify yourselves before men, but God knows your hearts. For what is highly esteemed among men is an abomination in the sight of God. The law and the prophets until John. Since that time the kingdom of God has been preached, and everyone is pressing into it. And it is easier for heaven and earth to pass away than for one tittle of the law to fail. Whoever divorces his wife and marries another commits adultery and whoever marries her who is divorced from husband commits adultery. There was a certain rich man who was clothed in purple and fine linen and fared sumptuously every day. But there was a certain beggar named Lazarus, full of sores, who was laid at his gate, desiring to be fed with the crumbs which fell from the rich man's table. Moreover the dogs came and licked his sores. So it was that the beggar died, and was carried by the angels to Abraham's bosom. The rich man also died and was buried, and being in torments in Hades, he lifted up his eyes and saw Abraham afar off, and Lazarus in his bosom. Then he cried and said, Father Abraham, have mercy on me, and send Lazarus that he may dip the tip of his finger in water and cool my tongue, for I am tormented in this flame. But Abraham said, Son, remember that in your lifetime you received your good things, and likewise Lazarus evil things but now he is comforted and you are tormented. And besides all this, between us and you there is a great gulf fixed, so that those who want to pass from here to you cannot, nor can those from there pass to us. Then he said, I beg you therefore, Father, that you would send him to my father's house, for I have five brothers, that he may testify to them, lest they also come to this place of torment. Abraham said to him, They have Moses and the prophets, let them hear them. And he said, No, Father Abraham, but if one goes to them from the dead, they will repent. But he said to him, If they do not hear Moses and the prophets, neither will they be persuaded though one rise from the dead. Hallelujah. Luke chapter 17, Then he said to the disciples, It is impossible that no offenses should come, but woe through whom they do. Come, it would be better for him if a millstone were hung around his neck, and he were thrown into the sea, than that he should offend one of these little ones. Take heed to yourselves. If your brother sins against you, rebuke him, and if he repents, forgive him. And if he sins against you seven times in a day, and seven times in a day returns to you, saying, I repent, you shall forgive him. And the apostles said to the Lord, Increase our faith.
So the Lord said, If you have faith as a mustard seed, you can say to this mulberry tree, Be pulled up by the roots and be planted in the sea, and it would obey you. And which of you, having a servant ploughing or tending sheep, will say to him when he has come in from the field, Come at once and sit down to eat? But will he not rather say to him, Prepare something for my supper, and gird yourself and serve me till I have eaten and drunk, and afterward you will eat and drink? Does he thank that servant because he did the things that were commanded him? I think not. So likewise you, when you have done all those things which you are commanded, say, We are unprofitable servants. We have done what was our duty to do. Now it happened as he went to Jerusalem that he passed through the midst of Samaria and Galilee. Then as he entered a certain village, there met him ten men who were lepers, who stood afar off. And they lifted up the voices and said, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. So when he saw them, he said to them, Go, show yourselves to the priests. And so it was that as they went, they were cleansed. And one of them, when he saw that he was healed, returned, and with a loud voice glorified God, and fell down on his face at his feet, giving him thanks. And he was a Samaritan. So Jesus answered and said, Were there not ten cleansed? But where the nine, were there not any found who returned to give glory to God except this foreigner? And he said to him, Arise, go your way, your faith has made you well. Now when he was asked by the Pharisees when the kingdom of God would come, he answered them and said, The kingdom of God does not come with observation, nor will they say, See here, or, See there, for indeed, the kingdom of God is within you. Then he said to the disciples, the days will come when you will desire to see one of the days of the Son of Man, and you will not see and they will say to you, Look here, or, Look there, do not go after or follow for as the lightning that flashes out of one under heaven shines to the other under heaven, so also the Son of Man will be in his day. But first he must suffer many things and be rejected by this generation. And as it was in the days of Noah, so it will be also in the days of the Son of Man, they ate, they drank, they married wives, they were given in marriage, until the day that Noah entered the ark, and the flood came and destroyed them all. Likewise as it was also in the days of Lot, they ate, they drank, they bought, they sold, they planted, they built. But on the day that Lot went out of Sodom it rained fire and brimstone from heaven and destroyed all. Even so will it be in the day when the Son of Man is revealed. In that day, he who is on the housetop, and his goods in the house, let him not come down to take them away. And likewise the one who is in the field, let him not turn back. Whoever seeks to save his life will lose it, and whoever loses his life will preserve it. Remember Lot's wife, I tell you, in that night there will be two in one bed, the one will be taken and the other will be left. Two will be grinding together, the one will be taken and the other left. Two will be in the field, the one will be taken and the other left. And they answered and said to him, Where, Lord? So he said to them, Wherever the body is, there the eagles will be gathered together. Hallelujah. Luke chapter 18, Then he spoke a parable to them, that men always ought to pray and not lose heart, saying, There was in a certain city a judge who did not fear God nor regard man. Now there was a widow in that city, and she came to him, saying, get justice for me from my adversary. And he would not for a while, but afterward he said within himself, though I do not fear God nor regard man, yet because this widow troubles me I will avenge her, lest by her continual coming she weary me. And shall God not avenge his own elect who cry out day and night to him, though he bears long with them? Then the Lord said, hear what the unjust judge said, I tell you that he will avenge them speedily. Nevertheless, when the Son of Man comes, will he really find faith on the earth? Also he spoke this parable to some who trusted in themselves that they were righteous, and despised others, two men went up to the temple to pray, one a Pharisee and the other a tax collector. The Pharisee stood and prayed thus with himself, God, I thank you that I am not like other men, extortioners, unjust, adulterers, or even as this tax collector. I fast twice a week, I give tithes of all that I possess. 
and the tax collector, standing afar off, would not so much as raise eyes to heaven, but beat his breast, saying, God, be merciful to me a sinner. I tell you, this man went down to his house justified than the other, for everyone who exalts himself will be humbled, and he who humbles himself will be exalted. Then they also brought infants to him that he might touch them, but when the disciples saw it, they rebuked them. But Jesus called them to him and said, Let the little children come to me, and do not forbid them, for of such is the kingdom of God. Assuredly, I say to you, whoever does not receive the kingdom of God as a little child will by no means enter it. Now a certain ruler asked him, saying, Good teacher, what shall I do to inherit eternal life? So Jesus said to him, Why do you call me good? No one good but one, God. You know the commandments, do not commit adultery, do not murder, do not steal, do not bear false witness, honor your father and your mother. And he said, All these things I have kept from my youth. So when Jesus heard these things, he said to him, You still lack one thing. Sell all that you have and distribute to the poor, and you will have treasure in heaven, and come, follow me. But when he heard this, he became very sorrowful, for he was very rich. And when Jesus saw that he became very sorrowful, he said, How hard it is for those who have riches to enter the kingdom of God. For it is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for a rich man to enter the kingdom of God. And those who heard it said, Who then can be saved? But he said, The things which are impossible with men are possible with God. Then Peter said, See, we have left all and followed you. So he said to them, Assuredly, I say to you, there is no one who has left house or parents or brothers or wife or children, for the sake of the kingdom of God, who shall not receive many times more in this present time, and in the age to come eternal life. Then he took the twelve aside and said to them, Behold, we are going up to Jerusalem, and all things that are written by the prophets concerning the Son of Man will be accomplished. For he will be delivered to the Gentiles and will be mocked and insulted and spit upon. They will scourge and kill him, and the third day he will rise again. But they understood none of these things, this saying was hidden from them, and they did not know the things which were spoken. Then it happened, as he was coming near Jericho, that a certain blind man sat by the road begging. And hearing a multitude passing by, he asked what it meant. So they told him that Jesus of Nazareth was passing by, and he cried out, saying, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. Then those who went before warned him that he should be quiet, but he cried out all the more, Son of David, have mercy on me. So Jesus stood still and commanded him to be brought to him. And when he had come near, he asked him, saying, What do you want me to do for you? He said, Lord, that I may receive my sight. Then Jesus said to him, Receive your sight, your faith has made you well. And immediately he received his sight, and followed him, glorifying God. And all the people, when they saw it, gave praise to God. Hallelujah! Amazing fact, the gluteus maximus, which is the main extensor muscle of the hip is the largest muscle in the body. Today's prophetic word and declaration receive the fresh baptism of a fighting spirit in Jesus' name. Amen. Any time, any situation of life is affecting your prayer life, that is your relationship with God that is under attack. Whatever does not want you to pray, I'm tired of, I'm tired. All this while I've been praying. Or in fact, maybe you have become so successful that you cannot, you cannot pray as you used to pray anymore. And when the struggle was much, the prayer was high. But now you have started counting billions and you can no longer pray. That is a state of emergency. Before the devil destroys a person's physical life, he will destroy their spiritual life. Because the spiritual is the sustainer of the physical or the material. If ever you love your relationship with God and you love, you love your spiritual life and spirituality, don't play with your prayer life. Let it be that it to 
Webaya Akakalina Zagwa Latwemoa Zinigalata Papa Kwa Katatela La Kwekwe Ekwe Kwabada Zanwa Twa Lua Kwapwa Zigalana La Kwatwa Bwatwa Kwaswa Kwa La Twenedia Elipwenwa Twa Bwanwa Swa Kwala La Dada I announce at this moment in the name that is above every name that by the release of this oil, this anointing, you are released into enlargement. The single shall enlarge into the married life. The marriage shall be enlarged unto fruitfulness. Businesses shall expand across the country and beyond the country. Your influence shall extend beyond where it is now. In Jesus' name!